Morning, welcome back to In the Garden, and you probably wouldn't know it by the heavy coats that we're wearing, but it's about time to get into the garden and start working on our beds. Absolutely. So it's all about soil health. Okay. Okay. You got to think of the soil as a living organism. That's the most important thing that I can ever convey to my fellow gardeners and newbies in particular. Okay. Because as plants grow, they suck all those nutrients out of the ground. You got to put them back before the next season starts. Okay. So I've had a blanket on this bed right here. Just it's just some straw. Okay. that I leave out all year and let it rot and get kind of ugly and gross. And you can even see, this is something that people, they freak out when they see this in their mulch. This is a, a beneficial fungus that's actually part of the whole process of decomposition. Okay. So this is called mycelium. And when you see this, don't panic. This is a good thing. So I've kept my bed insulated throughout the winter. I'm gonna move this back and we're going to add some soil amendments. Okay. Now amendments, there's lots of different types. Composted products of one form or another. It could be topsoil, it could be a manure based product, it could be mushroom compost is a really good one. So there's any number of different bagged products. You know, if you make your own compost, that's great. But bagged products are often the way a lot of people go and you need to get them down because planting time is just around the corner. Yeah, it just is, gotta get ready. So let's get this bed prepped okay. and then we'll start adding some of the soil amendments. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Beep, beep. Ah. Wow, that was fast. Oh yeah, that's me. Next step. Okay. Before we add the soil amendments, what I wanna do is open up the soil a little bit. Oxygen gets in there, water will percolate better. And to do that, a lot of people use rototillers. I'm not a huge fan of rototillers. What I like to do is use this fork Actually, I've got another one I'm gonna show you in a minute. Hmm. Oh, it's a oh, big one. Okay. But just take it and just stab and rock a little bit. Stab and rock a little bit. That's easy enough. See how it's opening up that yeah, soil? Yeah, sure is. And I'm not disturbing it that much. Okay. Whereas a rototiller churns it and turns it and really disturbs the soil layers. So you keep doing that. Okay, I am on it. And I'm gonna get the big mamma jamma out. Here's, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> huh. This well, is called a broad fork. Okay. Okay, and a broad fork allows you to really go to town. Wow. Boom, look at that. Just the weight of this, it doesn't require that it much effort, up. but the weight of it, boom, drives it in there. And this is doing so much good to open up that soil. So when we get that done, and let's assume that we're done. <laughs> Now we're ready to add the soil amendments. Okay. All right, Paul, the bed is ready to roll. Now it's time to put, what, some compost on here? Yeah, why not? All right. This is a cotton burr compost product. It's great stuff, and it's a soil amendment. You can even use it just as a mulch. And if you don't have a knife? Then use your teeth, teeth which is what I always well. do. There we go. And you'll see the color of this stuff. I mean, it's really, it's really beautiful stuff. Oh, wow, yeah. And then we'll just work it in, smooth it out a little bit, and boom, you're essentially ready for planting right now. So we don't have to do any type of mixing or anything with the soil we already have, just put it on top? You know what? You can incorporate it a little bit if you want, but again, I don't like to disturb the soil. Okay. You put it on top, earthworms are gonna come up, mm. they're gonna pull that down into the subsoil, and it'll be great. So this, this is perfectly fine. I will go ahead and cover this up just for another week or so, okay. because in a week, if not this weekend. It'll be 150 degrees probably. And I'm gonna plant potatoes and onions. Oh, okay, yeah. Potatoes are going in this bed right here. Ooh, looking good. So this is a way of providing those nutrients in a different way. So instead of having to rely completely on fertilizers, you build the soil health, the plants will be healthier, and guess what? Healthy plants don't succumb to pest and disease problems near as much as plants that are not healthy. So once again, you're just telling us if we prepare, we're gonna have a great garden as we move on into the spring. And if we don't get out of this cold, neither no. one of us is gonna be healthy. Yeah, we might not be here for next week's segment. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you on that. Some good advice there with Tafta and Paul. And uh, Tafta, they were saying, I like that little saying, stab and rock a little bit. That's good. That's a good thing to remember. And also that straw that he put down and everything, that's a really important part. Yeah, it really is. You know, the bag that we were putting out there had a lot of macronutrients in it. But right. we talk in the fall and early winter time when we put that straw on, 
as it starts to decay, it puts the micronutrients in there. If you didn't do that, if you didn't plan, obviously you can put a fertilizer on that and get that. But again, I mean, always great tips with Paul. And you notice so many, yeah. back earlier in the week, it was freezing whenever we talked about this. <laughs> what a difference a few days makes. Oh, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, 